see if you. This is Eddie Rabbit. Josh, on the uh, on the music today, Josh. Yeah, you know I uh, picked Everybody Loves the Sunshine for the lead-in of the first segment of this podcast, and uh, had to go with Eddie Rabbit to stay with the rainy theme. But I still love Everybody Loves the Sunshine, and Eddie Rabbit loves a rainy night. So I mean. It's intertwined, the circle of life, or at least the weather cycle. Someone that uh, we'll find out tonight whether or not they like sunshine is Mason Rudolph. And before we came on, we talked about the guy's throwing motion. And you made me think, like, I've thought this, and I've never actually expressed it, that Mason Rudolph's throwing motion always seems, and remember, he's a tall guy. You brought it up. How tall is he? Six foot Five, four? I think he's six five. Yeah, well, six uh, five. Six five. Great, awesome. So he's a tall guy. He's 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 prototypical. And every time the guy throws, it looks like he is like his arm is outreached, like the Statue of Liberty. Like he feels as though he's too short to get it over the offensive line or the defensive line. Do you ever notice that? We've just well, you do. We talked about this, but I've never heard anybody bring it up, and I'm glad we did because I see it all the time. Yeah, if you look at still photos of him, uh, he's always got the ball above his helmet. It's like, I don't not even so know. you want like a Phillip Rivers down no. by your waist. No, but. of course not, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look completely natural. It looks like somebody told him somewhere along the line, you got to keep that ball up high, son, up above your ear. And it's like he grew to be 6'5", and he still throws that way, and... I don't think he's inaccurate, inaccurate, as Mike Gundy would say, Mm -hmm. inaccurate, Um, but he's not supremely accurate. I don't know. His mechanics, the more that I've looked at him, the more that, you know, he's kind of been groomed to be Ben's replacement, the more that I kind of dislike it. And um, I think you and I were talking a little bit uh, before we came back on about uh, is the Steelers replacement on this roster, uh, be it. Mason Rudolph or Dwayne Haskins or even Josh Dobbs. I was going to say, don't forget about Josh Dobbs. I would never forget about him. He is a much smarter guy than I am, and he also plays in the NFL. So, uh, But, I mean, there's four quarterbacks on the roster right now. you got to think they're only keeping three. I don't know if they're giving Dobbs playing time in the uh, preseason to try and maybe trade him again for another draft pick. Uh, they've done it once before and ended up back with him. So, who knows, but... I'm mean, beginning to wonder whether or not they are doing that to actually see what they have in Josh Dobbs. I'm starting to wonder whether or not they believe as much in Josh Dobbs as they do Mason Rudolph. And if they do, that is such a sign that that Mason Rudolph pick and all the talk behind it and the first-round grade that was put on it was absolutely just utterly misjudged. A fumble for the ages because... The, there's so much pressure put on the kid, whether or not he was skilled enough to do it. That was put on him. Yeah, I just think he's average. I don't think he's a star NFL quarterback. And I think that over the past two seasons, with Ben being hurt a couple of years ago, and him getting that start in Cleveland at the end of the season, where Cleveland really had nothing to play for, but and, you know, and Mason almost brought them back to win. I think that was his best moment in the NFL. But listen, nobody would know who Duck Hodges is well, if, do, if but... Mason wasn't... Well, I guess he did get knocked yeah. out, but... I don't know. I just think he's an I think he's an average quarterback. Yeah, and I, I feel for the kid. You go back to that season, he was knocked out. He had yeah, a to couple walk. times. He got, oh yeah, <laughs> and one of which he had to walk off the field without a face mask because the cart for the stadium didn't work. He looked like Marvin the Martian. Oh, it looked ridiculous. Like with that the big helmet on. You know what? No face you know what? Mask. And I I'm, I'm going to put this on the record. Look at this tomorrow. My Twitter emoji or my Twitter picture will be Mason Rudolph without the mask. Oh, man. And just both arms around. He looks like a Peanuts character. You know, looks like he's getting walked off the field. He's got he's leaning on two guys. What, a, what an introduction to the league. Like, that happened. And then, okay, that happened. Then he tore his sh- or No, wait, no. The Mason, or the, he got uh, hit by Miles Garrett. Right. First a knockout, then he was out for a while. The Duck Hodges uh, run went off, and everybody was just enamored. And then he came back. And then the, the the helmet incident. Yep. And then the shoulder. We yeah. forget about the shoulder. And that might have been the most devastating one because, A, it was on his throwing arm. And, B, like it was the one that was like kind of we never give credence to. Like maybe Mason Rudolph still coming back from that. Like we always talk about Ben coming back from the elbow. Nobody ever wanted to say about Mason coming back from that shoulder. Fun story. Uh, I could have gone to that game in New York against the Jets. Yeah. And thankfully turned those tickets down. 
because uh, that ended our season. We did not. History. We did not make the playoffs, and uh, Mason got messed up. So glad we didn't. I'm glad I did not attend that game. That would have been a tough one to uh, wear a Steelers jersey too. Okay, so you talk about games you you've. You just mentioned a game you have not been to. Yeah. You had a chance Thank to. Thank God. <laughs> All right. Name the wildest, because that would have become maybe the wildest. What was the wildest Steelers game you attended in person? Easy. Easy. Also in New York against the Giants in Old Giants Stadium. Ben is a rookie. Eli is a rookie. They both go over 300 yards for the first time in their careers in that game. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And Jerome Bettis scored the Swing game-winning touchdown. Hand. The bus, Hall of Famer, got a jersey in my closet, uh, one of my favorite all-time Steelers, but that was by far the wildest game because it was, the Giants were horrible, we were great, you know, we went 15-1 and one that season, and I was sitting in a row with nothing but Giants fans, and of course, you know, I'm black and golded out, and uh, one it, would assume. it got very vocal and nearly got physical, but it didn't. Thanks to my uh, former brother-in-law, he kind of kept uh, kept the order. But uh, yeah, easily the wildest game I've ever been to. It's a, an interesting story. Uh, I I would assume, though, being present with you at said games, that uh, you you, you kind of hold back the, the the party for Major League Baseball. Hold back the party. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. You have more fun at baseball. You, oh. Does that mean you're a baseball I, fan? I'm asking. I know, I know what you're, you're talking about. Like that game, you, you were just kind of keeping the peace and doing like just watching things. Well, and, I wasn't. It keeping seems the like peace. baseball's where your heart is because you really <laughs> seem to enjoy those the most. Uh, well, I like your, baseball. Your thoughts. I like baseball because a, if you're a pirate fan uh, or someone that attends games in Pittsburgh, you don't necessarily have to be a pirate fan, but you get close to the players and you can you can heckle them. And you can talk to them and have conversations. Like, you know, I've real made real life conversations. I made Matt Holiday drop a fly ball. I heckled JD Ramirez very vulgarly in Spanish. Uh, JD uh, Martinez, excuse me, from the Red Sox. He w- was with the Tigers. Okay, there's and, two. Uh, uh, but the short, you're I, I, I heckled Kyle Schwarber out of the game, and you were there for that. Yeah, so that's three. So you claim claim that you have heckled three guys in which have either been taken out of the game or had a major blunder uh, within the field of play? Well, no. Two out of three because J.D. Martinez ended up hitting the game-winning home So run. he did the opposite. Yes. Okay. And uh, a nice woman with her young son in front of me was like, what are you saying to him? And I was like, ma'am, I cannot repeat it in English. <laughs> 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 the only reason I'm doing it in Spanish is because no one here understands it. But he did. I was getting glared. And uh, I'll never forget that game. I, I think it was the eighth or ninth inning. He ended up hitting the game-winning home run. The Pirates lost 2-1 to one to the Tigers. And uh, it was, no, it was the eight, uh, ninth inning because he came out for one more inning. And he was just staring me down the whole way. And I was just stood up and I kind of like shrugged my shoulders. I was like, all right, man, you got me. So, yeah. Those were fun. Cal Schwarber, though, I mean. He didn't come back out. And there is video evidence. He didn't He didn't want it. No. He didn't want it anymore. And, all, all, and he did not want all of 1,000 people that were in the crowd. I was going to say it, 700. Yeah, it was one of the small. It was probably the small. It was. It was a rainy night, middle of September. They were way out of contention. It was your birthday. Mm-hmm. And we went to a Pirates game. And there was more people at a um, at, at the state playoff games for softball that we attended <sighs> easily than there was at the Pirates game that night. Yeah, and you had full run, as you like to say. Yeah, and full run. I got to sit pretty much fifteen rows behind home plate. Like the the usher was just very kind, very nice gentleman. Thank you, wherever you are, sir. And I just went right down there. I sent you a picture. I'm like, man, we can sit here because you were very comfortable in left field. I send you a picture. All you send back is a picture from the seats that we were already sitting at. Uh, numerous times, actually, I sent yeah. you that picture because you were moving all around well, the stadium. Well, for going all over that stadium. You were like, hey, we could sit here. We could sit here. There's nobody in this park. We could sit on the first baseline. And I just kept sending back. Literally, you know, you I was the on seat, the left field wall. You were the seat closest to the left field foul pole. Yeah. And, you know. 25 feet, 30 feet away from Schwarber, and uh, he was getting it. He was getting it pretty bad that night, but not a vulgarity. And, uh, yes, he got his money's worth. Oh, he didn't like me. And, uh, you know, the Pirates 
sent an usher or security person uh, down to uh, keep an eye on me for several innings, and uh, I repeatedly ask him, did I say anything vulgar? And he goes, no, not yet. <laughs> and, and but you the were, minute you do, pal. Because, of course, there was no one there, and your voice just carried. Yeah. The guys uh, Unreal stuff. sitting behind me were egging me on a little bit. You uh, came back out to those seats and uh, egged me on a little bit. And uh, Kyle Schwarber, he didn't come out after the fifth inning. He didn't come back to left field. Hit in two in, inning ending double play in the fourth, and I was ready. I couldn't wait for him to come back out in the fifth, and he just didn't. And he did not. And, Those were fun. And, uh, yes, it was a wonderful day. It was your birthday. It wasn't wonderful. It poured on us, remember? Well, yeah, John. F- freezing cold. Well, we have a habit of, of being out in inclement weather. Oh, yeah. I noticed that. Uh, we're covering games in the state playoffs we got dumped on there. We got dumped on today. We yeah, we did. around town talking to many of the wonderful folks that uh, that uh, we do business with. I mean, thank those folks uh, for not judging us when we walk in there looking like drenched rats. Yeah. So. Um, we look like rats that fell into like a sewer drain. Yes. Very we're just so. completely drenched and walk into a place of business like, hey, we're, we're high top. <laughs> so with that, Josh, uh, we're going to take a quick break uh, here on NPR. All uh, right. No, this on- is Terry Gross. On High Top Sports Network. No, we will be right back on High Top Sports Network Steelers podcast. <laughs> 